All right, we're going to continue standing. So, and I apologize. My voice is a little shot, I have to be honest with you. This past Friday, I went to Medieval Times. And I have screamed more than I ever had in my life. Um, but it was awesome. So I apologize for that. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Filled in flesh the God had seen, hail the incarnate pleased as men with none to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing his wings. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Come, desire of nations, come. Fix in us thy humble home. Come, desire of nations, come. Fix in us thy humble home. Amen. The night the angels came, announcing peace to those with whom God is pleased. They couldn't have broken the quiet land in a more unexpected way. Hosts of angels lighting up the sky, trumpeting the good news, shattering the silence with praise and glory to God. How else would a Messiah be announced? Except instead of riding the white horse, dressed in royal robes, we found you on the outskirts of a crowded town. Given the last remnant of space, wrapped in a leftover cloth. And the least regarded citizens, lowly shepherds gathered under a dark sky, were charged with the glorious announcement of your birth. This is the peace that passes all understanding. The promise of a different kind of life offered with shalom. Freely offered to build bridges between our lives and your kingdom in the most extraordinary ways. Amen.
Will you bow with me? God, let us thank the stand that we let those who are sick and injured be healed and those who are struggling, help them so they can get through their struggle. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Morning. Morning. Today's reading is Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 13. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by, my, by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring you offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Bring out the people who are blind, yet have eyes, who are deaf, yet have ears. All the nations gather together, and the people assemble. Who among, <clears throat> who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring their witness to prove them right, and let them hear and say, it is true. You are my witness, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed, when there was no strange God among you, <clears throat> and you are my witness, declares the Lord, and I am God. Also henceforth I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can turn it back? Good morning. Glad that you are here this morning. We are focusing on Christ in the carols. In just a moment, we're going to sing, O Come All Ye Faithful, via video. But before we do that, a couple of quick announcements and an introduction. This afternoon at 5.30, Jerry Gibson is going to show us The Chosen. There's a special, what do you call it, episode that is the birth story. Uh, tonight would normally be question box. Uh, but there weren't very many questions, and so we decided to opt for this showing of uh, The Chosen. That's at 5.30 this evening. Also, you'll notice in your bulletin there is a sign-up fair coming in January where you can sign up to participate in all kinds of ministries here at North Park. And I encourage you to be, that will be on a Sunday morning, I encourage you to sign up. But I want to welcome you this morning to our morning worship service, and we're looking at several different Christmas carols that have powerful messages, and I hope that you will hear them in a new way. What do you remember from last week? Wait, what song was it? Oh, Holy Night. Close, Oh, Holy Night. And what do you remember about it? It was written by... <laughs> A drunk wrote it. And a drunk, a, a different drunk, put the music to it. So when you sing O Holy Night, you're not supposed to think, okay, let's get drunk. No, that's not, that was not the message. It was that if God can use a drunk to write a powerful song like that, He can use you. All right? Uh, today is week two. We're looking at the carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. 
It was originally written in Latin, and it was given the title Adeste Fidelis. I don't have any juicy tidbits about this one. I don't know, you know, if the author, the, uh, the writer was drunk or not. I doubt it. But I want you to sing along. Uh, we're going to watch it on video, and, and you can listen, but I encourage you to sing with us and pay attention to the words, and we'll talk about those in just a moment.
It's not the easiest song to sing along with, is it? <laughs> Maybe you're a little bit like me. You hear this song, and the first thing I think of is that's a little bit daunting. When you think about the words, O come, all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. The reason it's daunting is I'm not always joyful. Anybody else ever grouchy in here? Come on. I'm not always joyful. Well, may, maybe I'm joyful. I'm just grouchy joyful. <laughs> Did you ever get that way? Uh, maybe I'm not always feeling triumphant. And so it's a little bit daunting. It's, it, during this Christmas season, we can feel sometimes anything but faithful and joyful and triumphant. Christmas is not always a happy occasion for everybody. Maybe it's in being triumphant. Maybe that's the part that is daunting. That's a word we don't actually use a whole lot today. Sometimes we feel more defeated than anything. Boy, I thought I'd be in a better place, a better position. I thought I'd be, uh, just circumstances would be different by now in my life. Many times that's what we're thinking. Maybe it's your marriage. Boy, I figured after 20 years of marriage, I'd be at a different place in my marriage than I am. How did we get here? And I look at this song, and it's a call to triumph. It's a call for joy and faithfulness. And so I begin to ask this question. Who exactly is it calling? Who exactly is Jesus calling? If you have a, an outline, I would encourage you to get it at this time so that you can fill in some of the blanks. I want to look, if you're taking notes, I want to ask the question, who is Jesus calling? And the first thing, if you're taking notes, is this. Jesus calls the weary and the burdened. It's in Matthew chapter 11 where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are, what? Weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? Rest. And the second thing, if you're taking notes, Jesus not only calls the weary and the burden, but he also calls sinners. Who is a sinner in here? <laughs> None of us are perfect. If you're perfect, this is the wrong church. You, you got the wrong one. You came to the wrong one. I mean, we're perfect through Jesus. Amen? Amen. But that's the only way. In Matthew chapter 9, the Bible says, on hearing this, Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've come to call the righteous, not sinners. You see, it's almost like you could re rewrite this song a little bit and have it say, oh, come all ye sinners, ye weary and burdened, come to Bethlehem. If anyone is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, the new creation has come, the old is gone. And what does it say? The new is here. The new is here. That's who Jesus is calling and what he wants to do. So what does he help us become? After he calls us, what does he help us become? Number one, the first thing, if you're taking notes, Jesus is going to help us to become more faithful. Well, I don't always feel as faithful as I should be, but he will help me to be more faithful. In fact, in Hebrews 12 and verse 2, it says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. He will perfect it. It may not be where it should be, but he's working on me. And our, our faith comes from the one who, the, who authors it, and that's Jesus. Faith comes from hearing, but hearing what? The Word, the Word of Christ, the Word about Christ. Hearing God's Word, it builds up our faith, it perfects our faith. When we hear God's Word, it begins to build us. So He is working on our, our faith, but also it helps us become more joyful so that we feel more faithful and we feel more joyful Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is, and he lifts off, lists off, I think, about nine things, and one of them is joy. And what are we talking about? Because I don't always feel joyful. And I mentioned a while ago I might be grouchily joyful. Anybody else? Joy is not necessarily giddiness. 
silliness, happiness like that. Happiness depends on what's going on around you. My team won. I'm happy. But is that joy? Not the kind of joy this is talking about. Joy depends on Jesus. Happiness depends on happenings. What's going on with me right now? What what, do I like what's going on all around me? That's happiness. But joy? Joy comes from Jesus and it comes from way down deep and it holds you solid when things aren't going your way all around you. It comes from something that's deep inside your spirit. In Luke chapter 2, the scripture where the angels have come and they're proclaiming to the shepherds that are watching their flocks over the night and the Christmas story picks up in Luke 2 and the Bible says, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause what? Great joy. joy. Help me out. Great joy for whom? Who does that leave out? All the people, I'm going to bring great joy for all the people. Why? Because today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. And to you, 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 and to me. Number three, if you're taking notes, He not only makes us feel more faithful and feel more joy, He helps us to feel more triumph. To feel more triumphant. Sometimes we have to have another person in our life for that. Sometimes you have to have help. To really feel triumph, you have to have help. Somebody that can help you out. Do you have that person in your life? Somebody that that really just, they are always there. You know, they got your back. (laughs) Here's the thing. Many times we don't realize there is someone who has our back. We just don't give him credit. It's the living God. He has our back. And that's pretty triumphant right there. We have to understand who it is that's fighting with us, for us. It's Him. Would you bow with me and let's pray. Father, we come before Your throne. And right now we're mindful of a song that says, O come all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. And Father, as we... We, we, we just take a moment to say thank you that you sent your son as Emmanuel, God with us. And I just want to pray for those of us who are feeling a little bit of faith struggle at this moment during this, this holiday season. They, uh, maybe this isn't all about joy for them. Father, would you be with them? Give them strength. Give them patience. Give them wisdom and discernment. Help them. Walk right alongside them. Help them to get through this time. And Father, I I pray that you would help us to feel faithful, joyful, and triumphant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would certainly hope that if you're here this morning that you believe in Jesus Christ. I don't know if you do or not, but I sure hope that you do. But I hope that you go just a little bit farther than that. I hope that your, your faith in Him is one that, that says, you can have my life, Lord. I'll just surrender to you. I'm going to give it all to you. Are you a child of God? Are you a Christian? If you are not, don't leave here without becoming one. We, our prayer is that you would become a Christian this morning. Let us talk to you, study with you, whatever we can do to help, so that you are included in that, O oh, come all ye faithful. And so we're about to sing a song of encouragement, and I think it is, what is it? Angels we have heard on high. And as we sing this song, you've got, you got three choices as I see it. One is, maybe there's something private in your life and you just want to talk to somebody. There's an office back over in this corner. Go over there and one of, one of us will meet you there. Maybe there's something public going on in your life. You just come to the front as we sing this song and we'll sit down and talk to you and, and the whole church will be praying for you and with you. Or you can sit right there and talk to God on your own. But don't just sit there and do nothing. So as you sing these words, take them to heart. And if changes need to take place, make the changes right now as we stand and as we sing.